Hello there and welcome back to the studio today. Here is an image of the painting that will be created in today's episode. So what we're going to do first is use a little bit of my drawing medium, okay? Drawing medium and my raw umber. And before I get started, here is an image of the original master painting that we will be creating a master study of. Yes, this is a Vincent van Gogh. Okay, so if you want to find a really, really nice reproduction of this painting, I recommend going to the Google Arts and Culture website. Just Google Arts and Culture, look up Vincent van Gogh, and you should be able to find a really, really high resolution image quite easily. So. As always, this is a paint along, okay? So I will be painting and talking to you and you will receive all of the footage involved in the development of this painting. And if you wanna know exactly what materials I'm using, you can feel free to scroll down to the description box down below and I'll have all of that information typed up for you. So go ahead, go get your sketchbook, do it. I know you're sitting there right near your sketchbook. Come on, get the sketchbook or your oil paints and follow along with me or your acrylic paints or gouache or you know whatever paints you want to use now let's talk about what i am doing here so if you're new to this channel the first step really is almost always to establish the composition so that is the placement of this image so i'm going to say that the bottom of the facial hair i don't know give or take should be about here top of the hair probably around here uh, I don't want the head to go you know off camera so I'm gonna make sure that it stays somewhere over there and of course I don't want the ear to go too far now before I get too much further remember this is a master study okay this is a learning exercise with a painting as an end result what we do here is we study uh, the methods of the masters not necessarily the exact same methods or techniques but we spend a lot of time observing okay the photo references in the top left corner of the screen um, you know, we spent a long time observing what the masters did and try to recreate it using our own techniques. The idea is not to have a perfect replica. As I always say, if the idea was to have a perfect uh, rendition of this image, just get a photograph, print it onto the canvas, and call it a day. But that's not what we're after here. So now let me explain. Uh, so we have the placement of the head, okay? I don't want the head to be too small, so I think that this is about good. So top of the head, bottom of the, the facial hair, and I don't know, give or take, I guess the shoulder is gonna fall around over there. The collar is over here. Okay, so the idea here is to now move into the block-in stage. Okay, so this was the first step, the compositional stage. So now that we have our composition, um, maybe we can start to use a few simple straight lines and angles and start to facilitate the uh, big shapes, the big proportions. So whether you are just beginning in drawing or painting or you, are, uh, you have years and years and years and years of experience, it's always a good idea to think about it structurally in the beginning. So in the beginning, well, I guess throughout the entire thing, right? But you know what I mean. Um, I'm just looking at simple straight lines and angles, you know, a form like the ear, I would use just maybe, I don't know, maybe just a few lines, okay? So you can count it, one, two, three, okay? Now for the features, um, I'm gonna be a little cautious with the features because I can't really tell, um, you know, the, the angle between the eyes. It seems it's a little bit like this. So let's go ahead and kind of make our first little guesstimation here. So the axes of the eyebrows. So an angle somewhat like this. And then the eyes somewhat like that. I have been told uh, that my starts look somewhat like a robot all the time. Um, which is pretty cool. I mean, um, you know, I grew up watching Futurama. Go ahead and comment down if you watched Futurama as well. You know, I, I watched it twice. <laughs> like, from the first episode to the last episode twice. So, yeah, Futurama fan. 
definitely would like the uh, the starts to look like Bender. We can put the little eyes and stuff for for Bender. But you know, this is not the video for that. All right. So now we are going to establish the center line. So the head is in three quarter, almost perfectly three quarter, meaning we're seeing more of this side of the head than this side of the head. Okay, so I think I just got the center line wrong, which is okay. I'm going to push this corner out. So the thing about this Van Gogh, um, there's a lot of personality in this painting, and I know that's kind of um, cheesy to say, um, but there is. I mean, look at his eyes. You know, look, look at the emotion that is evoked from this image. And Van Gogh was a master in that aspect, you know, trying to get the effect of emotion in a painting. And I usually don't really talk about emotion because, you know, I'm more of a technique oriented person, though I do have feelings too sometimes. Um, and you really get that, I think, from from not only his expression, um, but the way that this painting was created. And we'll, we'll explore some of those aspects later on. But for now, the important thing is to you know establish the main triangle. So let me talk about what I mean by the main triangle. If you're new to this channel, okay. So the main triangle. Okay, we have a point here. We have a point here. Got to be careful not to get this angle too extreme, but okay. Point one, point two, and point three. Connect all three points in space, and guess what? You have a triangle. So that is the main triangle, okay? The two eyes and the bottom of the nose. Now, with portrait, it's important to be practical because portrait is very, very difficult. Um, and it's just easier, in my opinion, and most people's opinion, to adjust the hairline, the you know facial hair, the jaw. It's much easier to adjust these things that I'm talking about than to adjust the eyes. Okay, the placement of the eyes to the nose is in extremely important. It's very easy to overdo the nose. It's very easy to make the nose too long. So we have to be careful with that. Remember the nose, the length of the nose is uh, defined as from the root of the nose, uh, so the bottom of the nose here, to the nasal bone. You can see a very strong brush stroke or that could even be a palette knife mark for the nasal bone. And the eyes, we're not going to put too much detail uh, detail for the eyes. Just a few little marks should do. And now I'm going to work my way down. Actually, first let me stand back. Oof. Yeah, uh, I should probably stand back more often. And as I always say, this is a paint along. So every time that I stand back, it's an open invitation for you to stand back or sit back. So right now what I'm doing is uh, just using a bristle brush. This is a pretty beat up bristle brush. Let me go ahead and turn the autofocus off. All right, it hasn't even been 10 minutes yet and I finally figured out to turn off the autofocus. So that's good, meaning the camera won't uh, try to do its thing and focus unnecessarily, but whatever. So, I'm now using the bristle brush as an eraser. There is no extra medium on the bristle brush. It's just a fairly used up bristle brush and you know how bristle brushes can get kind of rough. So I'm going to use it to push around the uh, drawing color a little bit. The drawing color is uh, raw umber, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. So I tend to relate the bottom of the nose to the ear. So I think the ear is a little lower. But like I said, I mean, it's almost like we're staring into Van Gogh's soul. Okay, now I'm going to move down over here. And just very simply start to map out where the facial hair is going to fit.
Now the um, the bristle brush obviously isn't going to work perfectly as an eraser, but it does do its job quite nicely. Now the hair. So with the block in, okay, the block in is meant to simplify the structures, okay? So if you can distill a complicated thing, such as a human head, into a few series of straight lines and angles, and study those angles with uh, precision, you can then start to build onto that uh, framework very much kind of like a, an engineer or how an architect would go about constructing uh, you know some kind of structure so here's the back side of the, the facial hair this goes down to about there I might have shrank uh, the head a little bit this was my initial mark down here but eh, that's all right if anything, it might look a little better since we're moving the head up a little bit. Okay. All right, so now, like I said, it's much easier to adjust everything down here. So the mouth, I'm not going to focus too much on, okay? So just maybe a few little marks like this and not really much more. Now we're going to look for the concavity of the eye socket going all into here, okay? And the eye, forget about it. Forget about the detail. Don't worry about it. It's useless at this point. Don't draw any eyelids, eyelashes, any of that stuff. Forget it. Uh, don't try to worry too much about the details. And just moving the concavity of the eye socket a little bit over. <coughs> Excuse me. And the, um, the features you can keep relatively simple, okay? And it's it's kind of a, a habit to, to work in this way, to, you know, keep things simple and, and easy. If you overdo it, you know, there's something wrong with it. I've, I mean, I've done that before. I mean, I've I've gone into, you know, details with the eyes and things, and then all of a sudden I have to move an eye or, or something like that, and it's okay. This is a strategy. What I'm, what I'm giving you here is a strategy, all right? Okay, so the hair is going to go up to there. And I think that's uh, pretty good. I mean, it's, it might be looking like... Um, a little bit like Abe Lincoln right now, but it's all right. And as far as the accuracy is concerned, I, I think maybe about 85 or 90 percent accuracy, which is actually quite difficult <laughs> to obtain, is what I'm after. Now, obviously, I'm not going to physically go in and measure and, um, you know, try to calculate the exact accuracy of the shapes. That's not what I, you know, that's not what I want to do. But it's just kind of a thing to keep in mind. It doesn't have to be perfect. We will go in and carve out more specific shapes with color. All right. So I'm going to stand back. And I think the, the basic block in is about good. All right, now it's time to bring out the bristle brushes. Let me just make sure I hit record. Yes, I did. All right, so I'm gonna use a little bit of yellow ochre, mixing white. So just mixing white, yellow ochre. And there is no medium, no extra medium, just oil paint. So a little more zinc white. Let's try to keep the color uh, really simple though. It should be a little bit cooler and that's why I have this color here So if you're wondering what that is, um, I actually pre-mixed that color myself This is a pre-mixed color that I use in my studio paintings So it's not really a color you can buy um, What it is is just a tiny bit of thalo green to cadmium yellow light Okay, that should be about good. And I realized that I need this color. Um, I needed that color, or I would need that color for these uh, subtle half tones. 
So I'm going to stand back. Okay. So I'm going for the light. Okay. And if you're wondering why the canvas is toned, uh, this neutral gray tone, the idea is to be able to work from, you know, work lighter if I need to, or work darker if I need to. If I were to be working on straight, on a straight white canvas, which I have done before, and I actually do use white canvas quite often in my own studio work, then you have to kind of establish everything from the white and then move up. Nothing wrong with that. It's just I find it a little bit easier and uh, faster to work this way. So now we're going to be pushing the the light all into here. Okay. And a strong shape for the nose goes out like that. Okay. Now the ear, of course, I, I need to mix up a little bit more of this color, a little more of the, the green. You know, it's kind of hard to, um, to look at a wonderful work of art such as the Van Gogh painting and not think about the artist himself. We know a lot about Van Gogh through his letters to his brother Thiero. Um, and I, I think that a lot of our personality comes out in our work, whether we uh, want it to come out or not. And I really do get the sense of, um, you know, inner inner battle that uh, Van Gogh was going through. And it's beautiful the way it is portrayed. It's very poetic. Okay, all right, so I'm going to switch brushes here. So um, I'm gonna have a middle tone brush and a light brush. So I'm going to use, uh, let me try to not use this too much because this color, I'm really, I really only intended to use it there. So let me try to mix the, a little bit here. So the mixing white and the sap green, a little bit of raw umber, burnt sienna. Okay. All right. So now let's start to establish some of these darker tones. And notice how the value is going, it's getting darker as we move down. And that's just because I like to organize my, uh, my colors in that way, from lightest to darkest, warm to cool, or cool to warm, or, or whatever, just some kind of order to the colors. So there's a very interesting plane here uh, that I'm noticing. It's a very sharp plane for uh, the corner of the um, the side plane of the forehead. It's very sharp. So clearly Van Gogh knew about uh, planes, of course. And for whatever reason, he chose to make this one very sharp, which is not usually what you see, um, you know, in traditional painting. But it's very interesting to to see in this painting. A little bit more of a greenish half tone. And these are very, very unconventional flesh tones. So I, it begs the question why um, he chose these hues in particular uh, rather than, you know, warmer colors. You know me, right? I tend to use a lot of warm colors. I don't know, maybe that's just the way that I see the world. I'm not sure. Maybe Van Gogh saw the world a little more blue, perhaps. You know, blue and yellow will give you green, so it's a lot of coldness to this, which again is very poetic. So um, the main triangle is my, my goal 
with these planes even though I was putting all of these colors here. So let, let's spend a little while now on the main triangle. So it's going to get a little bit darker near the, the corner of the eye socket there. So we're just working on these big planes. It's a little more sap green and the uh, mixing white. Okay, stand back. Okay, all right, so I have a little bit of a dilemma. I want to get rid of this outline but I don't want to, I, I want to stay true to the painting. So Van Gogh left an outline over here. Uh, well, you know, his outline is kind of bluish, so let's use the ultramarine. A little bit of ultramarine. Okay, so now the outline is a little more blue. Okay, very careful not to lose that outline. Um, what I might have to do is go back in with the drawing brush and just put that outline back. Okay. Now the glare, of course, is glaring a little bit. But all right, so I have the outline. Obviously the shape isn't right, but what I want is just to make sure that that's the right color. And while I have this brush, let me just blur over here. Like I said, no need for details with the eyes. It looks like I might actually have to use smaller brushes a little bit sooner. The concavity of the eye socket is very blue. Very, very blue. So what does that mean? Is that Van Gogh saying the world seems very cold to him? I don't know. All right, so now I need to get smaller brushes. Where's my brush? Okay, all right, so now with the smaller brushes, a little bit of ultramarine blue, ivory black, a little bit of, nope, nope, nope. I keep wanting to reach for that, but since I don't have much of that, all right, so the yellow ochre. So I'm filling in a color now for the iris. And we pretty much already have that color for the iris. So these, these flesh tones are very, very um, different. Very, uh, I guess you could say, yeah, yeah, just different. So what I usually mix up for the sclera is black and white and some flesh tone, but here I really have to analyze that color. So I'm using titanium white, ivory black. And it's still kind of cold. So I did, like I said, I used the Google Arts and Culture uh, website for this photo reference. So I'm fairly confident in uh, the uh, quality of this photo reference or this uh, documentation of this painting. So I'm pretty sure that this is what the colors looked like. Which is quite um, interesting to see. So a little bit more light for the sclera. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna to switch to the darker brush. 
a little bit of the raw umber. Let's look for the tear duct. Okay. So there we have the corner of the tear duct on one side. Now let's look for it on the other side. A little more raw umber. Okay, all right. Now let's put in a little bit of a darker tone here. And of course, um, gotta stand back. Okay, so you really wanna focus on, in these areas here, especially this early in, um, in a painting. If you can get the main triangle well established, you're pretty much set. Like you're, you're in a good place to continue to build more of the um, information, okay? So from a practical standpoint, that's why I think it's, it's better to focus on the main triangle first. Okay, I'm gonna stand back. Okay, standing back. Okay, all right, so I think I need a much more blue color, so let's use titanium white. And if you're wondering why I have two whites, okay, the mixing white and the titanium white. So the, the mixing white, this one that I've been using more of, allows me to use more of it without raising the value too much, therefore I have a, uh, a more paint in the mixtures, that's all. Stand back. Okay. Now we're starting to get into some of the smaller shapes, and I'm running into some trouble with my brushes. Okay, so I have a different brush. The brushes are kind of kind of worn out, these smaller ones, so I'm gonna have to purchase some newer ones relatively soon. So there we have the pupil, though I probably have it in the wrong spot. Okay, so I'm gonna switch to the other brush. A little bit of light over here. Now there's still the little dark ring around the iris here, but uh, the brush is a little too large for that. Uh, so I'm probably gonna just return to that later. Now the nose, again, lots of blue. I wonder if he had a blue underpainting. It could be. There's blue even in the accents. Okay, if you have a, a theory or if you know why Van Gogh, there's a lot of blue in the, in particular here, like in the corners, like the accent of the eye. I have a feeling he might have used the blue underpainting, but if you know the answer to that question, then the question of why is there a lot of blue, especially in the accents, uh, yep, go ahead, comment down.
And um, so when I get more focused, when I have to focus more in the painting, I tend to be a little bit more quiet. So I think we're reaching that point now where I need all my f almost all my focus to be in the um, painting. Especially, you know, trying to facilitate the main triangle. And it appears that the nose is actually turned a little bit, like away from us, not really following the center line. Um, so I wonder if that that's intentional. So Van Gogh, maybe he's kind of turning his nose away from us. Now with the drawing brush, I'm gonna to start to put in the, um, so a little bit of burnt sienna, raw umber, cadmium red. We're gonna to start to put in the facial hair. bit of a lighter value. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna switch back to the larger brushes. And now that we have the main triangle established, though it looks kind of silly <laughs> that I only put that little, little bit of uh, the facial hair, so let's just uh, spread the tone down here. And no extra medium, okay? Just paint. That ought to do for now. All right, so back to the larger bristle brushes. Now there's gonna be a whole bunch of subtle uh, values to put in here. So I think what I'm gonna do is now get into the uh, the half tone with the green. Uh, the this pre-mixed color that I was talking about earlier. Now I'm using it very sparingly. Meaning I'm not using too much of it, though obviously that's really, really green. Um, but I want to push the color here because this is a very important aspect of this painting is this color right here. In, in my opinion, of course. Now that I have that green established, ah, let's go ahead and put that green over here too. All right, so now that I have that established, I'm gonna go back into the lighter tones. Okay, a little bit of burnt sienna, just because I like burnt sienna. Now we'll start to put in some more planes. 
That is the frontal ridge of the skull. This is the, um, oh goodness, I'm forgetting, the glabella, okay? This little plane here. We want to make sure that that is nice and well established. And it could get a little darker. Uh, so when there's a little more emphasis on the glabella like this, that usually means that it's, it's a more serious look, you know, like a uh, serious look of contemplate, contemplation. So there we go. Now we're getting more of that uh, personality in the painting. I'm going to get a different brush here. Uh, yeah, why not? So a little more burnt sienna, yellow ochre. So this is a very liberating painting to, uh, to study. I must say, I really enjoy these colors. So much personality. Now, of course, Van Gogh used um, a lot of paint in his paintings. So maybe he went in here with palette knife or something like that to build the thickness of the painting but you know I'm not really going for the texture with this particular uh, painting just because you can't really see through I mean you can't really see the texture too well on YouTube anyway um, and it's just gonna be really expensive for me to <laughs> use up that much more paint okay I think we need a little bit more of this bright green so what I wanted to do when I um, pre-mixed this color was to create a uh, like a permanent green light type color, which I cannot find um, in this in these particular brands of paint. So I had to pre-mix that. In case you're wondering why I pre-mixed it instead of buying it. All right, so I don't want to get my brushes mixed up. Uh, let me see here. So this is the dark one, light one, dark one, light one. Okay. Just don't want to mix them up. Um, so now with the lips, uh, it seems like it's kind of just a brush stroke, but I do see a plane here. So let me put the plane in there and then we'll put in the brush stroke side plane of the lip there all right now i now i definitely need a smaller brush where's my brush okay all right so i'm going to have to add the drawing medium onto this smaller brush to thin out the paint a little bit and let's just use this color let's use the alizarin
again this is very liberating because of course it's not a you know like a classical realist painting but nonetheless even though it's not like an alma tadema or a sergeant or you know a waterhouse or it's, it's even though it's a, of a different technique there's still a lot to learn from the way that um, this picture was orchestrated and I think it's really the emotion I don't understand it to be honest I don't understand how it conveys the, the emotion that it conveys but there's a lot of emotion that, that we get from this i stand back okay all right so now uh, drawing brush burnt sienna yellow ochre cadmium red yellow ochre So the ear, on the side of the ear, we're going to need a little bit more of this green. And then later on we'll get into the hair. Even in the tragus of the ear, lots of the green tone. So I do think there might have been a green underpainting. So I heard that... Um, Van Gogh worked very quickly, sometimes producing multiple pictures in a day. So maybe he went about it in a similar fashion. And just like I'm doing here, just applied the, the paint a la prima, meaning wet on wet. Definitely a lot of that green color over here. It's almost like a, uh, I don't know, like the colors are like glowing in saturation. All right, so now I'm gonna look for a different brush. Oh, there it is, okay. Now we're gonna get the ultramarine blue. And we're just kind of doing two things at once. We're carving in this outside shape, and at the same time, we're starting to lay down the foundation for the, um, the clothing. Okay, so a little bit of, whoops, a little bit of the titanium white. Now we're starting to paint in the collar. Lots of blues. And I can really kind of uh, sympathize with Van Gogh. He, um, yeah, of course, now it's story time since I'm filling in some of the background stuff. Uh, so first let me explain what I'm doing with the background. So ultramarine blue, ivory black. So um, of course Van Gogh really struggled to get his work uh, shown, exhibited, and basically for people to care, you know, about his work. A lot of us can really um, relate to that. I certainly can. You know, I spent hours and hours and hours on paintings. Um, and I don't really have much recognition, even with all of these, uh, all of 
all of you that are subscribed. Um, thank you so much for subscribing to my YouTube channel and um, you know keeping up with my artwork. But I I feel it too. Um, the pressure of no one noticing you, no one noticing your artwork, and it it hurts. You know, it's it's a it's a real struggle that all of us go through. Okay, and if you're struggling emotionally you, as an artist or as a person just know that you're not alone okay there are days where i really just you know i struggle too um getting the motivation to walk into the studio and to work but enough about that we're getting a little too real so um I'm gonna start to put in some of the shapes for the hair and then I'll just walk my way over with the blue background color. So the burnt sienna, yellow ochre, mixing white, So I'm going to start to lay out some basic planes. So here we have a plane here and here and now over here. And I'm going to leave the darker side planes alone for now. Now we're still going to need a little bit of the that green color over here. And um, we're just softening the edge around the hairline. We're gonna add a little bit more of the green. There. Okay, a little bit more of the green, the premixed green, for the side planes. Yellow ochre, mixing white. We're gonna put a little bit more over here just so we can come back in and start to cut into the you know the outside shape. Okay, a little bit more. I'm almost trying to mimic these brush strokes that Van Gogh used. Okay. All right, so now that we have some stuff in there for the hair, Oh, I just got paint all over the side of my brush. Oh dear. Okay, so now we'll start to cut into the, the hair and sculpt out this shape. It's a little more ultramarine, ivory black.
so now that I'm <laughs> I'm starting to cover the background, I guess it's story time. So I usually um, reserve story time for the background since you know the background is not as uh, intellectually challenging as say the the face. So this is kind of off topic but kind of on topic with this particular uh, master study I feel like artistic depression is a thing um, I met someone a really really amazing artist um, a couple years ago or I guess more than a couple years ago now whose work was incredible though you know incredible in the sense that it was poetic not necessarily you know realism uh, what I'm trying to get at is I met an artist that was struggling also with sadness and that their work was not being seen and that they felt like they had less ability than others of course I'm not gonna mention any names but you know I couldn't understand it at the time because I was so young and I didn't really know you know what was going on but I think what was going on is that there's some kind of artistic depression that happens a lot of us as artists we put so much emotion in our work we put so much of ourselves in our paintings and oftentimes people don't really get that they don't see it you know it's not like in music music is I don't know I can't I can't really talk about a field I don't know about much about but I I suppose we we get a sense of emotion in music um, you know when someone is like really angry or something like that like you know you know like Eminem the rapper Eminem when he when he raps or sings you know he's, he's got to be angry about something he's got to be fired up about something and that's what makes his music so amazing I mean in my opinion um, and I think that it's not really talked about as much as um, as I guess I think it should the depression among artists you know we feel like our work is never appreciated we feel like no one's ever gonna care about us or our artwork or anything like that and it's important to talk about it bring some awareness to it and if anything I'm here for you if no one else is my voice let my voice in these videos guide you along your day I'm here for you I may not have time to go into my comments as often but if you write to me on Instagram I'm more likely to be able to respond just because my Instagram is not you know I don't have as much um, people as many people trying to contact me on my Instagram I just ran out of ultramarine blue. Where is my tube of paint? Ultramarine blue. Okay. So I am trying to mimic the brush strokes a little bit that Van Gogh used. Though it looks like it's palette knife. I know, I'm not really sure. I feel like we artists as creators, um, sometimes that kind of emotion, that sadness of our work not being seen or anything like that can actually add to our artwork a little bit. And if you're feeling that way, you know, it's okay to feel sad. You know, if you're going through something, it's okay. You know, let yourself feel. You don't have to hide things. And sometimes, as we are seeing in this painting, those emotions, I feel like, have been portrayed and, um, what's it called, I immortalized through this wonderful painting. Every brush stroke, I can tell, there's a lot of emotion. There's a lot of emotion in it. So I'm going to extend the background all the way down here. 
Now the uh, the clothing. Let me just bring this all the way down here, and then ala, we're going to go ala prima with that. So meaning wet on wet. So ivory black, ultra marine blue. And just wet on wet. We're going to put in that edge. Okay. Now just covering that shape down there. I'm aware that I'm going off camera over here, so I'm gonna just let the crop over here. So I think now we're gonna use the titanium white, ivory black, a little more ultramarine blue. Okay, all right, so now we're gonna put in this shape here. stand back okay all right so now that I have this smaller brush I'm going to revisit the eyes so we're gonna use the ultramarine blue so I'm using the drawing medium and again if you're curious as to what medium this is uh, I have it linked in the description box down below which, by the way, I have affiliated Amazon links. So if you were interested in purchasing the same type of materials, um, you can feel free to do so using my Amazon links. And if you do purchase any of these materials, Amazon will pay me a small amount in return. So thank you so much if you decide to do that. Even this smaller brush still isn't small enough, I think, for uh, the task here. So I've, I'm putting in a little bit more than I need. And now I'm going to go back in and kind of carve. I'm going to have to add a little more of the medium, the drawing medium. Now we have the outline, I hope. Okay, all right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and push this shape in a little bit. First, let me stand back. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna push this in. Okay, all right, stand back. Okay, all right, so titanium white. A little more medium. I don't really see a highlight on the other side. I'm gonna stand back. Yeah, I don't, I don't really see it, but I still think that the iris might still be too, too dark. Okay, stand back. All right, so now we're we're getting somewhere with the iris, irises. Stand back. Okay, all right, so now I'm gonna have to put in some more information in here for the eyes. So I'm gonna just use the same brush.
Stand back. Okay. Raw umber. Stand back. Okay, so after standing back, um, I think that this value can get a little bit lighter. Let's just use this. And now we're applying the paint wet on wet. So wet paint on top of wet paint. A little bit more of the cadmium red. So yeah, I feel like all of this can get a little bit lighter. So we're applying the paint uh, wet on wet. Um, so I'm going to thin it out a little bit with the medium. So when you're painting Ala Prima, um, wet paint... Hold on, sorry about that, just got an email. Um, all right, so when you're painting wet on wet, thinner paint tends to stick onto thicker paint. Speaking of emails, I'm trying to get to my emails, uh, m more of my emails. I, I'm not really good with uh, email. I'm trying to get better at that. Um, I mean, in terms of responding, it's just my... Um, one of my friends I actually have to cover for him tonight for his uh, figure painting group, so I uh, saw that notification on my iPad. But anyway, um, I'm trying to get the value a little bit lighter. It could also be, I'm going to adjust the light sensitivity on the camera. Just a little bit, there we go. So usually what happens is when I start to add more values into the, the painting, I have to adjust the light sensitivity on the camera so that you can see more of the, um, or at least something closer to the true value of this painting, the true values. Okay, so there's some of the facial hair going all up in here. And it's a softer edge, so we're going to paint it a little bit softer. Stand back. And of course, I'm forgetting some of the, uh, some information behind the ear. Yellow ochre. So I'm going to try not to do what I did, uh, or what I forgot to do with the, the Zorn, not the Zorn, what's it Zorn? What's the Soroya um, Master Study from last week? I'm not going to forget the uh, other side of the collar, but in this case it's the hair over here. I'm going to try not to forget that this time. I'm thinking of the negative space, um, so from here to here.
Okay. All right, so there are some darker accents for the hair. And I think they're a little bit more red. So let's do that. All right, stand back. Might have gone too far with that. Should I say too dark? So a little more the yellow ochre. Stand back. Okay. So each time I make a mark, I kind of, I'm starting to stand back a little bit more often, or I sit back a little more often. Okay, so now I'm going to, um, I think I have to lighten some of these tones a little bit. So we'll use that green color. Stand back. Okay. Just gonna soften this edge a little bit. Stand back. Okay, so I'm gonna soften this one, sharpen this one. Stand back. Okay, so I think I need a little more light here. We're gonna soften the edges around the eyebrow, and then we're gonna go ahead and add the eyebrow back in later. Titanium white. We're going to use some of that, the green, premixed green color, titanium white. A lot of paint there. And of course it's glaring a little bit, so I'm going to soften it. So I'm going to use a clean and dry synthetic brush. Just kind of move the paint this way, which should help reduce the glare. There we go. So now I'm gonna get another brush. Okay, burnt sienna. Titanium white. Oops. Change brush. Try that again. So burnt sienna. It's just mixed down here. Titanium white. And maybe just this. How about we just try this? A lighter over here for the eyebrow. Now we're putting the eyebrow back. I'm 
We're doing the same thing on the other side. Stand back. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to the larger brushes again. I'm going to add a little more specificity to the half tones here. Yellow ochre. Mixing white. So I'm just trying to get this plane, lighter plane, darker plane, and not so dark plane. So we get the, that, the kind of expression. Stand back. Okay, so I think I'm missing some information over here for the eye. And I think it's the tear duct. So I'm going to push this back. Ivory black, let's see, so ivory black into this area here. Let's put the tear duct back in. There. Oh dear, so I lost <laughs> the corner of the iris. Solve one problem, create another. And, um, you know, I, I think that there's a lot of problem solving that we learn in painting that can be applicable in other, situa other situations in life. Um, I've been thinking about this quite a bit. Um, you know, learning how to paint, learning how to see, learning how to draw. Um, by learning how to see, I mean learning how to uh, simplify the complexity of what we're observing when we're painting. But in any case, I really think that it helps us um, with problem solving. So I had this idea in mind. Uh, so I'm telling you this idea while I repaint the uh, iris, since you've already seen me paint the iris once. Uh, I have this idea. So when we're drawing or when we're painting, we're obviously thinking a lot, right? We're obviously problem solving. So I had this idea. And I think someone, I don't know if anyone has done this or not, but if you take a, a person, uh, I don't know, an artist that's drawing something, so let's just say drawing. Um, so if you take maybe Jacob Collins or I don't know, some some drafts person, right? And you attach an fMRI uh, to their head. You try to get an fMRI. And then you look at the areas of the brain that are, uh, you know, that are firing up while the artist is drawing or painting. In this case, let's just say drawing. Then you can deduce, well, okay, so if these areas of the brain are being uh, stimulated while the artist is working, then can you theorize that learning how to draw or learning how to paint can be beneficial to someone in terms of teaching them problem solving or enhancing their problem solving skills. I should say enhancing their problem solving skills in a creative way. I'm really curious about that because I really do wish that 
uh, schools would you know teach drawing or painting or at least have more emphasis on the education of this but I don't know so my question to you is have you heard of any experiments like this and if you have um, yeah just share that information with us Now I'm just putting this light shape back in there. So I think I think we're almost there. Again, I don't want to make a perfect reproduction of this painting and this video is specifically designed for you to uh, draw or paint along with me or you know if you you prefer to just listen to me while you're working on your own studio work and um, that's fine too. Or if you're just watching because you enjoy watching, that's fine too. But yeah, I'm just going to put a few more little areas of uh, information and I think we'll, we'll call it. stand back stand back Okay, I'm going to stand back again. I must be forgetting something. But I guess I won't know until it's time to edit this video. Um, a little bit of the ultramarine blue. There's actually a little rope over here. Rope. Uh, a tie. Not a tie. Oh my goodness. Uh, like a string over here that I didn't see before. So might as well paint it in. Okay, all right, stand back again. Let's put a few more of these little brush strokes in. And yes, the sap green kind of fell all the way down here towards the ultramarine blue, but that's okay. gonna stand back so um, I think that yeah just a few more little brush strokes here then I'll put this shape or that plane back in I kind of lost it earlier let's use the premixed green Stand back. All right. Minus a few details, of course, that we didn't paint in. I think that's that's pretty good for a uh, paint along. Again, this video was designed for you to draw or paint along with me. 
and or of course you can watch it however uh, you feel but thank you so much for watching I really do hope that today's episode helps you out and always remember just like we were talking about before with the uh, depression that we tend to go through as artists or should I say um, you know sadness that we go through as artists always remember in a world that can be so negative be the spark that ignites positivity among all of us. I truly hope that these videos are helping you out. I'm just softening a little corner there just because that's kind of what I tend to do. Okay, I'll leave it be. Let's just get rid of that brush. I wish you the best in all of your artwork if you would like to support this channel even more. I have a Patreon account. A link to that will be in the description box down below. I wish you the best in all of your artwork, and I'll see you on the next episode.